So we, we start this presentation. Um, so good evening uh, to everyone, the, the few people here in the room and also the people connected uh, via streaming because uh, yeah, this time uh, we are used to, to have a kind of hybrid uh, way to communicate. So this uh, will make no exception. So thank you for being here. And today we are talking about, we are going to talk about uh, um, health and also technology together. And that is a, a, a great thing, a great thing to, to, to speak about. Um, let me introduce uh, myself. I'm uh, Quang Godin, the CEO of uh, uh, Olivetti. Olivetti is part of a team uh, group. Uh, slides are not going there, so please. Okay, thank you. Team group. And uh, uh, with, uh, with our partner, also Vection Technology, that we'll introduce uh, shortly. Uh, why we are talking about uh, uh, Team Group here? Because Team is uh, uh, recently um, evolving her, his strategy, going beyond connectivity. You will see the word beyond uh, we will use uh, many times in this presentation. Um, and Olivet is part of this strategy. So go beyond, beyond uh, uh, connectivity uh, means uh, several uh, domains uh, like uh, e-health, uh, mobility, energy, agriculture. And so uh, our objective is to uh, bring technology in these domains to improve uh, businesses' uh, uh, digitalization and also quality of life. We have uh, today, obviously, we are talking about e-health in particular, so the domain of uh, all the solution around uh, health. Uh, in Olivetti, we have a number of solutions. I, I just uh, mentioned one of these, that is the Home Doctor, that is a platform for uh, uh, remote man management of patients, and that will, is bringing a lot of benefit for uh, allowing doctors and hospitals to manage uh, chronic disease, also uh, normal patients, uh, remotely, uh, bringing a lot of uh, saving and also improving the quality of life uh, of patients. But today we are talking about something uh, uh, more technological, let me say, and uh, and um, this will uh, will um, uh, the, the, the the uh, bringing technology with uh, with healthcare is bringing is unlocking a lot of opportunity in terms of saving efficiency, of course, but also in quality of life of patients. But uh, so let me stop my introduction, and uh, uh, I'm happy to hand over uh, to to Pierluigi Spada to going deep with uh, the remote education and certification that is the uh, topic of uh, uh, today's meeting. So please. Thank you, Kwang, and good afternoon to all of you. And well, actually, I'm a clinician, so I'm not a technician, or at least I'm a surgical technician. But what I'm talking about now is uh, going beyond uh, connectivity beyond technology to bring beyonds here, which means that we try to develop a cooperation, a cross-cultural conversation between technology, connectivity, and clinic to manage a new era, a plane where a new era for the health system can be developed. Technology is developed on, uh, on a heart, like the human being as a heart, XR, the cross reality, it's, uh, well, I've learned that is um, a catch-all term that in include all the terms like virtual reality, augmented reality, 3D evolution, or mixed reality. All of these platforms can dialogue in, uh, in an interactive way. And it's possible to uh, customize products in order to give uh, uh, to the clinical practice uh, a new method and even a new tool. We think the future. When um, I've been contacted to talk about this, uh, I was thinking, well, it would be amazing to do this. Well, actually, it is present. When I was thinking to the future, actually, I was just immersed in the present because all these realities, all these platforms can be managed now. And we try also to uh, develop possibilities that are useful, 
because something is the effect wow. Uh, you see like a sort of gaming effect, but is it really useful in the clinical practice? Is it really useful and uh, efficient in the educational field? Well, the answer is yes. Literature is uh, scarce at the moment. The majority is classified because it's uh, of military interest. But still, the meta-analysis that has been developed in the clinical setting uh, show that the education uh, is improved, the knowledge is uh, fastened up, and the possibility also to reduce some risks are, uh, are increased. Increasing the efficacy and the efficiency of teaching and training, which means not only during education programs like residency program, but also for junior doctors and senior doctors. And it's possible to do this not only on site, but all over the world. It would be amazing, I don't know, 30 years ago when I started my activity as a surgeon, to have like trainers uh, like somebody in the United States or in uh, South, um, South Africa. I mean, to trauma, and there, there are the, the best teacher ever. Well, now it is possible. It is possible to integrate reality, integrate uh, uh, experiences, uh, and give a new uh, input also to education. In this first video, uh, we try to show you how is it possible to create with virtual reality uh, an environment where you can share, when you can call even an expert. Trainees and trainers can be together, can be called uh, to join a session. It works also for a clinician to discuss a clinical case. There you, you can uh, upload everything from surgical videos to uh, DICOM images uh, of radiological studies, uh, even papers. You can even interact inside to write down something. And you can do that from your place together with the others. A little bit like what we are doing now, but at the moment I'm not interacting with any avatar with those that are behind that camera over there. They are following us uh, somewhere in the world. In this, you can also customize products uh, just in order to, in order to have like um, models for teaching or even uh, uh, re-elaborate DICOM images uh, in a very short time uh, to have like 3D models of that specific case. And, but I will show that afterwards. The environment is collaborative. The avatar helps to interact with each other. And uh, it's possible to interact with people that you can't see. Now we are able to talk through a video camera, but now we can interact, we touch together. Multi-user, live discussion, uh, MMN's conferences uh, would be improved in this way. But not only the immersive reality, like the uh, virtual reality, also the augmented reality. The augmented reality allows to support a junior surgeon in the OR from outside, from a studio, just wearing small glasses and be guided by expert. Like in this one, in the OR of the gynecological, uh, gynecology department uh, in my institution with the Foundation Policlinico Gemelli in Rome, we just set a possible cooperation between Professor Scambia and one of his junior assistants in the OR. So you, you can, if you need a help, you don't need to go there. You can stay at your uh, computer and guide people. And this is one-to-one, -one, but it could be one-to-many. And you can integrate this uh, before and after with the other virtual reality, so you can discuss the case uh, again uh, after the operation. So all these platforms are integrated and um, are possible to dialogue among each other. This is a, a kind of uh, uh, speech that we can have through uh, the system.
in this you can see uh, peritoneal carcinosis and maybe sometimes it's difficult for a junior surgeon to understand if how to go on and then uh, the, the senior or uh, in this case Professor Scambia guided him uh, to decide what to do until uh, the decision was made. But in this, uh, literature helps to uh, understand that all these tools improve knowledge. Uh, we have a few meta-analyses in which it has been shown that using these tools in a shorter period of time, you can increase the knowledge of the youngest. The training could be implemented it is possible even to imagine a sort of surgical certification in remote assistance. It is possible to certificate in a common way. Um, you say, in that school, like we used to say in, surgical, uh, in the surgical environment, in your school, uh, they are pretty good. In that one, uh, well, um, they're not the same standard, or maybe are better in something else. Well, you can have uh, a common uh, education uh, all over Europe. It's easy. It's not easy just with a platform. It's not just an idea. You have to integrate many platforms, many techniques, and more. And then we'll see afterwards. It's important that you have a very good connectivity. Also, legal disputes are mitigated. Because you can record everything. You can record even the act, even that you have called the senior one, for instance, or that you have discussed before and after. You have everything recorded. I'm talking about the surgical environment, but this could be exported to whatever environment in a hospital, uh, from checking blood uh, or a checklist that you can tick off well, just with a blink of an eye. Uh, these systems can read your pupils and see the movement and recognize who you are and what you do, or just with a, a small movement. Try to imagine how you can change uh, the, the future of um, a possible integration uh, with this that now is just a paper that you have to check and, uh, and sign with a, with a pen. But these realities can be mixed, so you can use both. And uh, you can use augmented reality, you can use virtual reality, you can mix them up. And you can use even uh, the simulation. We have been uh, quite got used to um, um, simulation with just uh, mannequins, but even mannequins can become interactive. Just with code bars on those mannequins, you can change the feature of that mannequin. Uh, our colleagues, cardiologists, knows that very well. They can change an AKG easily just to train what is happening to that patient. It's more difficult on a mannequin of a gynecological mannequin, but you can do that with mixed reality. So you have the feeling of touch together with uh, the changing of a scenario. And now it's patterned also um, this integration of, uh, of virtual reality, augmented reality, and this is, I guess, a new clinical era. So if the motto of this Congress is per aspera ad, aspera, ad astra, we want to bring you to the stars, surpassing the difficulties, because it's possible also using technology. This one is what we are developing now. So using DICOM images in few, I don't know, two hours, few bunch of minutes, you can uh, re-elaborate it and uh, create a 3D model. A 3D model that you can discuss. So in a time that allows you to go to the OR more skilled, more prepared, you can discuss in the virtual reality environment. You can discuss uh, when you are within uh, the OR or just before you enter. Many studies have shown that if you play uh, video games, a uh, few minutes before you go in the OR, your laparoscopy can be better. Your skill can be improved. Well, if you use this, let's say we play inside the OR, you can have like a tool. Try to imagine what it means when you are operating not to go on a computer and check for the CT scan, 
but having there an hologram that you can move the way you want. You want to find that lymph node that you can't find, but has been marked by the radiologist in there, or even have the radiologist that can guide you to find it in this reconstruction, 3D reconstruction. This is possible, and this is now. That's why we think that Beyond is here. You can customize products. I'm talking, we have tried to work on something that is gynecological focused, but uh, centered, but um, you can do whatever you want. You can even train nurses um, or uh, uh, midwives. Um, you, you can create whatever you want. When I ask, but is it possible? When I talk with the technician, is it possible to do this? Everything is possible. The problem is that uh, it's difficult to find the cross-cultural conversation. Technology, connectivity, and clinics. And sometimes we are a little bit stuck up. We don't want to talk. We want the industry enter inside to support us, but we don't interact. With Kwangwe, we were talking before, and we have a vision that is in common. And when you create a tripod, which is technology, connectivity, and the clinical experience, you have the plane of a new era, of a new medicine, of a new education. And this goes beyond even hospital. We know like uh, uh, what is telemonitoring, telerehabilitation. Uh, now we have garments that can record everything in our body. Even through the sweat, they can monitor the glycemia or uh, the urea. So it's possible really to have, uh, with a glimpse of an eye, uh, to have like the situation of a patient uh, recording on, on your computer and decide who has to go to the hospital and who is not, and discharge the patient uh, quick, quickly, uh, uh, avoiding a lot of time of people in spending money, staying in hospital, waiting for an intervention, but you can manage everything even uh, from a remote, um, a remote assistance. And uh, you can also follow up the patients, but you can give the hospital a voice. Connectivity is not only like a LAN wire that connect your computer to uh, internet. Connectivity is also create a bond between the health system and patients. That's why it's not only like a strategy of video conferencing, a more sophisticated video conferencing. Is it possible even to give a voice to the hospital, to so bring the hospital to a human level? For instance, this is just an example. You can set some totem all over the, the hospital that guide the patients or clients to go where they have to go. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, shared by others, but sometimes we, when we go out an elevator, we look down just to avoid to give information. Through these systems, we create a, a real new alive hospital and a new branch of research. I told you that there were only few meta-analyses in the clinical practice. The majority are uh, in the military environment, so are classified but are interesting because some of them, uh, some hints uh, you, can, you can get from uh, some, some site. But we have to develop this because in this way, you re we really step ahead in a new era. It's not just a machine that improve our technique. It's also the way this machine, let's talk about robot, uh, robotic surgery, but how this machine can dialogue with doctors and with, and I use the plural uh, because it's possible not to have just a relationship one-to-one, -one, but one-to-many. Beyond this year, it's uh, a time. Beyond connectivity as a space. All of this in time and space to give it to present need someone who is into uh, developing beyond connectivity. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs>
Thanks so much, uh, Pierluigi, for this amazing uh, presentation. And uh, what, what is the role of, uh, of uh, Olivetti, of uh, technology? As uh, uh, Pierluigi said uh, uh, very effectively, uh, we, we have to talk to each other because uh, this is uh, something that enables uh, uh, progress uh, and also digitalization and the, the great benefit. So that, that's why Olivetti is uh, uh, partnering with uh, uh, the, the clinical world, that we are talking about clinical world, and clinical people are talking about uh, with the technology. technology. Because the, the joining the efforts, uh, we can deliver what you have said. Because uh, the, 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 with the Olivetti platform, we are able to deliver what you have uh, already seen, with uh, in already integrated with uh, uh, some key enablers like uh, technology, like uh, connectivity, cybersecurity, that is uh, fundamental with this kind of uh, services, um, hardware devices, and end to end assurance. Because these uh, fantastic products uh, uh, come to life when you are able to have an end to end solution, not only the product uh, that itself uh, alone is not real. So what we can say today is that uh, all what you have uh, seen is uh, uh, reality. It's, not, uh, it's no more future. It's something that you can, uh, you can have in, uh, in, in your hospital. Uh, another example of what we can provide together with uh, this solution is uh, you, what you can see here. That is the tool that allow digital certification of the training attendance. That is. Uh, a, a very important issue, especially for distance learning, also especially in the case of where training has a legal uh, implications. So what we can do with technology is to digitize uh, all the certification process using uh, the uh, digital uh, signature technology. That is a technology used by government, for instance, that, that can uh, uh, certificate the attendance to the training courses uh, with, legal, uh, with legal compliance, uh, bringing uh, a lot of benefits. Uh, one of these is uh, sustainability, because we can eliminate paper and all that stuff, uh, and also can enable distant learning, and also legal compliance. Uh, so this is one small example on how we can integrate together pieces of technology with uh, some clinical product to deliver an end-to-end, -end, a real end-to-end -end, uh, experience. So that is, uh, that is all. So thank you again uh, to, to Pierluigi. Thank you all uh, to, to have listened to us. And uh, I see that there is no question pending uh, in the, the chat tools. So, Question? Okay. So I would like just to make a comment and uh, to thank you to to be here uh, today because I I think that we uh, we are in a very um, important moment so we have to develop our educational training uh, and probably the modality we did this until now is ma is now not not more uh, useful so I mean that we have to try to uh, develop educational models in which uh, most of the training could be, done, could be done at home and not in the hospital or in a training center or something like that. So I, I think that your presence here, uh, I would like to be the first step of a collaboration that we will have surely with Policlinico Gemelli and but I hope also with our European Society of Gynecological Endoscopy. So I think that in the next uh, weeks we could meet together. We, we should explain to you which are our needs, how we are going to develop um, educational, our educational pro programs, and by sharing the vision, we could find a new way to, 
to to reach and to to give educational pathways to our members to our young doctors and so on so thank you very much to be here thank you thank you so thank you to all and uh, oh sorry another question and the comment i have a question which is uh, for probably for your future what I miss, I work with simulator in imaging. So I just have video, I have a lot of things that I use. But what I miss is not my eyes, but is my tactile. So uh, that when I, I need sometimes to, to have my probe in the hand, and I think it's the same for surgeon. Do you think you can add this? Yeah, it is, it is possible. When I was talking about mannequin, but it could be even a laparoscopic, a laparoscopic uh, like simulator. You can build everything and uh, you have the touch and a changing scenarios. It's not just that one that usually we have in, this, uh, in these programs, usually up to now. But in the next future, you can really build scenarios. We are working also on this, uh, for instance, uh, triage scenarios. Try to imagine even uh, with uh, a problem in uh, obstetric uh, setting. You, you can't have just that problem. You, you, you have many, and you can build all, that, all those many that you need. So yes, it is. And also that it's not future, it's present. I'm not a seller, but <laughs> I've seen it. You are very able to do so anyway. <laughs> but uh, let me add also another thing to, to, to add on your comment. Uh, that is, technology is, uh, is there, but it's fundamental again to have an end to end solution to do so, like uh, low latency connectivity, because this is crucial to do uh, remote surgery, like 5G. 5G is uh, the typical example of uh, uh, low, very, very low latency technology. And also cybersecurity. We cannot uh, afford uh, bugs or uh, malicious intrusion while we are doing uh, uh, so, so this, this kind of business. So this is important. It's not only to have the solution, but to have the end-to-end -end solution, including connectivity, cybersecurity, assurance, and, uh, and also the hardware to do so. I, I totally agree. Without what you do, that would be just uh, a program, just a software, nothing else. It would be any development. Only when you pass that, those problems, uh, you really can improve, increase, and grow. And create progress. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.